Hi, Fast Track Property Friends. This is a time of the year again. I will go through with you the quarterly updates for the private properties. Let's start. So as you can all see from this chart here, again, all this information is brought from URA, right? You can see that uh, the residential property is doing extremely well. It's hitting all new highs. Um, in fact, for the whole of this quarter, it has increased by 3.5% beating the flash estimates. And this is uh, five times the result of the previous quarter, which was like 0.7%, isn't it? All right, <clears throat> excuse me. We are presently at 180.90 of the PPI. And if we were to separate this between the lender properties and the non-lender properties, yep, uh, for the lender properties, we've increased it for, by 2.9% and the lender property and the non-lender property by 3.6%. Now this is very different because uh, for the first quarter, non-lender properties actually came down by 0.3%. And it seems that it came back with a vengeance at 3.6%, right? First quarter, land properties increased by 4.2% and now it's at 2.9%. Yep. But overall, here you would know that we are already hitting all times high. Now, um, these will then show you what are the changes in the price indices for non land properties in the different regions. Yeah? For the CCR region, for the first quarter, it kind of contracted a little bit at 0.1%. It came back out, bounced back in fact 1.9. And for the RCR, it really came back a lot from a negative 2.7 to now a 6.4%. And then the OCR 2.2 and 2.1%. Right? Now what you're seeing before you would be the pipeline supply. Now this is um, a figure that it refers to new developments and redevelopment projects with planning approvals and this means with uh, written permissions, right? And we can see that from here, beyond 2025, there's going to be not much units. Now let's just look, take a look at how many units we're looking at. For the second half of this year, we're looking at uh, 7,195. Now effectively, what this chart means is that these are the number of units on the in Singapore that is going to... Um, be able to TOP, collect their keys, okay? And next year, this is the light brown color, right? Yep, this actually would show you the EC's numbers. So for next year, we are going to have an expectation of a 17 over 1,000 units available. Everyone's going to be so excited to collect their keys. With EC's collecting their keys, which is 2,000 over units, and 2024, you have 10,900 over EC's. 2025, 8,000 plus, 600 over for your ECs, 5,000 in 2026, and beyond 2026 will be 362. Okay? Um, how do we then use such information for our planning? Right? Uh, with this graph, you can see that basically a lot of inventories will be coming in next year, and therefore, for those of you who are going to uh, renew your present lease if you're renting, yep, I would suggest that if you can negotiate for a renewal of one year or maybe perhaps 18 months because I expect that with new inventories coming to the market, especially at such massive amounts, um, the rental market should soften at least by the end of 2023, right? Now, <clears throat> this would be the total inventory. Total inventory, what this means is it is still building, all right? Uh, not TOP yet, all right? It's all in the market. And as of second quarter, 2022, we have 48,000 over units on hand. Again, I've gone through every quarter, right? The orange color will tell you which are going to be the new supplies that will add on to the um, total inventory. So for example, these supplies, once this is up and ready, um, next quarter, you will have this amount that will fill in the blue bar here. Yeah? So it's not too bad. I think uh, we have leased more lands for sale. Some on blocks are coming in, and these are uh, the 8,000 units we have by. They have already have, already have um, received, right? Not received. They have not been granted planning approvals yet, right? So if they have been granted planning approvals, it will then be added in the 48,000. Now, this is a demand and supply. Uh, it tells you that. Our supply has increased from 14,000 here. It's increased now to 15,800 of unsold inventories. This is for the primary market, yeah? All right? 
And we have done so much better from the first quarter. The first quarter, we sold new launch units of 1,800 over units. And for this quarter, I think it's because of Amo also, right? We actually hit 2,397 units. And I think if we continue this pace, um, we should hit our 10K new launch sales this year. Um, there are still many upcoming that I will go through shortly. And if you add all of this together, um, I think we are still looking at a possible low supply and high demand environment. Okay? And I, I think moving forward, at least for the rest of the year, pending there's no changes to new cooling measures, there could be a possible continuous upward trend of the PPI. Now what about our resale market? <clears throat> Last year, 2021, we did phenomenally well, right? If you can still remember the numbers, last year we hit close to 20,000 uh, um, resale units that changed hands. It's about the same as back in 2010, yeah, over here, okay? So um, this year, first quarter, we hit 3,000 plus, and second quarter, it actually went up higher at 4,000 over units, and as the price gap of the new launch and the resale continues to widen, I believe that the resale market is expected to do well this year with numbers that is going to be at least um, in this range of 13 to 14,000 units. And now, if we look at this as a total number of transactions for Singapore, right? Uh, this is for the new, uh, new launch segment and this is under the resale. So if we compare quarter to quarter, yep, this quarter we did 2397, and compared to the previous quarters, uh, we are still quite healthy. Well, we kind of just uh, below the numbers of 2021, but we are at the same type of numbers or maybe even higher than in 1.9 and in 2.0. That is for the new sale. Huh? And for the resale properties, I think it's about the same. We have 4,000, it is well above the 2020 that year and the 2019, right? Um, it's not as high as in the previous year or rather last year, but I think it's still strong. And I think with all these numbers, for all of you who have not been looking for a property yet this year, I think you should really uh, discuss, think about it and buy something that makes sense for you. Yeah. Now let's look a little bit about the new supply in the market. If you have been looking at the business times, okay, this is, uh, has been released, I think, on the 10th of August. If you have your, your um, digital ones, digital reader, right, you can pull this off. Uh, it's quite a new, it's quite a nice uh, illustration that tells you what is happening in the different, different parts of Singapore. In Orchard area, you can see that um, these two units here, High Point and Elizabeth Towers, they're still presently still in the market looking for a, for a buyer, right? In Oxley River Valley area, we have units that has been sold, this property here, right? Uh, the rest are still asking. And if you zoom in down, you can actually look at the land rate, freehold property, sold at how much, right? Land rate at 1381. If you go to Tanling area, you have Anderson sold already, Tanling Shopping Centre sold, right? Orchard Bel Air is in the market at the moment. Jurong, Lakeside Apartments and Park View Mansions has been, has been taken and Thompson presently is actually uh, in the market. Right? I've highlighted those in red because these are the, are the condominiums that has already been sold. Now, um, if you look here, you will see that we are all reaching all new benchmark prices with Anderson, Tangling Shopping Centre, hitting a land rate of 2,400 to 2,700. And therefore, looking at this land rate, you will know that if you put it up in the market for sale, all right, all these projects are going to hit and surpass the 3,000 over dollars mark. All right, it will not be surprising to, to hit 3,300 plus minus. Huh? There are already some projects that is transacting at these numbers, but it's just really a handful and more are coming into the mix. Jurong area, these two is side by side, all right? Uh, I've already liked Jurong area. I think a lot of us have been looking for that, for that place to buy, but there's been no new launches there for a while already. Um, Lakeside was sold in May, and Parkview is sold in July. But you, what is interesting to note is that for Lakeside Apartments, the land rate that was 
transacted and concluded was at 1250 to 1260 per square feet per plot ratio. Now, these two lands are side by side, right? And the other property that was purchased by Chip In Seng was actually concluded at 1023 per square feet, right? So, it's interesting to note because when these two lands are launched, right, uh, it might create a good opportunity, all right, as an investment or even for own state to buy at a price that makes a little bit more sense and less risk. Now, what about at uh, Pasir Panjang? Let me just show you the highlighted ones first, all right? So these two has been sold um, early this year, 2022. This is Gloria Mansions. Yeah, this is a small little property here for $1,000 over dollars per square feet. Flint Park was done last year at $1,300 over per square feet. I think we should be able to look at all these properties coming into the market end of this year or, uh, okay, for Gloria Mansions, most probably next year, right? But end of this year for Flint Park or even first quarter of, um, sorry, end of this year or first quarter of next year. <laughs> All right, Serangoon Chuan Park, in the papers you read in July, they've transacted this property at $989 per square feet. Now this condominium is just beside uh, the Long Chuan MRT station, right? Um, this is a very good land rate and again, this is one of the risks of an on-block, right? If you come in late, the majority of the owners, I've, I think I said this in my previous videos before, if majority of the owners were to continue, were to agree to sell the property because it bought at a really cheap price, the, as long as it hit 80%, it will still be sold. Yeah? Uh, this is something you can keep an eye for if you'd like to be staying somewhere near Serangoon area. Um, again, it's next to an MI station. It could go for a good price depending on the situation at the time. East Coast area, you have Mayor Park presently under on block uh, waiting for offers. Laville has been sold, again, land rate about 1,005 plus minus. It's all going to hit above 2,000 plus per square feet. Bukit Timah Buk uh, Buk area, you have Walton Estate, all right? You have this area also sold, more freehold properties. Everyone, these two condominiums are going to be above 2,000 plus per square feet, yeah? Kalang area, all right, um, Sultan Park is up for on block. Nothing done yet. Golden Mount Complex has been concluded by Far East. Yeah, this is at 1181 per square feet per plot ratio. Again, this is going to be quite interesting. If I'm not wrong from this place, you're able to walk over to the MRT station also. Yeah, Peace Centre uh, has also been taken up at 1,400 plus per square feet. Okay. And you go to the Tanjong Katong area, you have Hague Road, Jam uh, Street Avenue. This was done in 2021. This is done in 2022. Yep. This one should be launching end of this year, right? And Maxwell House has been taken ready. Presently in the market, we have Pippard Park Centre and International Plaza. Now, all this basically I'm showing you is because I want to just explain to you that the developers are really hungry for land, right? And even though um, I really thought that in December, developers are going to kind of shy away and, and buy really small plots of land. I think some of them has done that, but some has also gotten some sort of medium-sized plots of land, right? Um, and in this, and I think they know that we're in a situation where demand is high and supplies are really low. And either they are cashing in to build up their land bank, all right, but um, it seems that they are also... Um, really bullish about Singapore properties and the developers are also thinking that it should continue to go up at least for the medium term. Yep, I mean this is what I can take away from this. Yep, now what about some of the deals that were concluded uh, for our GLS, yeah? So you have our Dairy, walk, dairy Farm Walk. Now Dairy Farm Walk was awarded in March 2022, so just to keep in mind that all properties that has been tendered and success, or rather successfully awarded and tendered in the GLS site will be launched about a year after it was given to them, right? Um, so this should be launched somewhere first quarter of next year. At $980 per square feet per plot ratio, for those of you who like to look at dairy farm area, estimated units about 385 units. The next one that was awarded was Pine Grove. This is in District 21. Um, if you guys are familiar with Ulu Pandan area, yeah? 
This one was awarded in 2022 land cost at 1318 per square feet per plot ratio with an estimated number of units of 520 units. So something to look at. Um, just a little bit of uh, 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 estimate and gauge, I would then use the building cost, the construction cost, because now materials has also come down significantly. Uh, you add that together, you have a break even about 1,009. So you more or less, you bring, bring in some profit margin. We are looking at about 2.3 to 2.5 per square feet during the launch price. Dublin Road, okay, this is, this is um, of course, a very good area. I think this is going to be one of those uh, mega projects you should be looking out for next year in 2023. Awarded in June 2022, land cost at 1350. The estimated number of units here beside the MRT station, right, is 1040 units. Now, I think the last time we had such massive units with uh, a, a project with big landscape and a lot of number of units uh, was maybe treasures at Tampanese. And that was not really very near the MRT station, right? This is just next door to the MRT station, and I think it's going to be very. Um, not marketed very well. Something you can look at, right? Lentor Central. Now, what you saw earlier was what has been awarded. Now, this has been launched in May, Lentor Central District 20, just south side of Lentor Modern. That's the project that's going to be launched in um, September, right? Next month. So, this is launching in May 2022. The deadline is in September 13, estimated 470 units. You have just the south side of it, uh, Parcel B. Again, uh, this will be, the deadline is 13 of September. Right? This is a smaller plot, uh, closer to Yochukang Road. It's 265 units. Right? And then we go up to the launch date for Bukit Timah Link. Now, uh, I think last year or, or two years back, there was the link that was sold, I think, in, on the first day. Uh, and that's because of the neighbouring plot. This is a purple colour plot. This has been sold and is sold to Far East again. This is the mixed commercial, right? Um, uh, and it should be launching this year, if I'm not wrong, right? Jalan An Anak Bukit. Uh, this is given a mixed development handled by Far East organisation. Yep. And this is just next to it. Right, just opposite the road. Uh, estimated, also small, like the link, the link was, I think it was about 120 units. This is 160 units. Yeah. And then you have Hillview Rice. Okay, for those of you who love to stay in Hillview, um, just south side of Midwood, Midwood here, right? On the other side, it will be Dairy Farm side, on the right hand side. This is walking distance to Hillview MRT station, right? Uh, this is Glendale Park. Now, this is available for tender from the launch date of August, estimated to have 335 units. And in October, you have Lentor Gardens. Eh? Lentor Gardens is because all these I'm going through with you are in the confirmed list already. So launch date is in October, expected to yield about 530 units. And this is something that you want to look out for. Uh, I'm excited because this is for the greater southern waterfront, right? Um, big piece of land, right? Mixed development, commercial space of 750 square meters. Estimated residential of 795 units, right? Launch date is end of this year. It's just, it's, I, I sh it should be connected to the Marina South uh, uh, Brown line, isn't it? So, uh, this is something you should look out for. I think it's going to be very exciting. Yep. Um, but at the same time, you have to be a bit careful also, right? <laughs> okay. So anyway, yeah, this is be cautious, right? Be cautious why um, I wanted to add in. If you have not um, seen my previous video yet on what is happening to the market, why is the market still so buoyant, right? People are still so bullish about it. They're still buying properties. Where is the demand coming from? Uh, um, where is the supply not coming from? All right. Why are people still buying, though the transaction volumes has came down, but the prices still has climbed back up, right? What's the reason behind all this? I'm going to put it in the link over here. So just watch it during your free time, so you can at least have some ground knowledge of what's happening on the ground, yeah? Now be cautious. This is something that I'm looking at, 
all right? Um, you know this arrows for the time being. This is Lentor Modern. The preview of Lentor Modern starts 2nd of, September, uh, 2nd of September to 12th of September and launching on the 16th of September, right? And if I were to just put in here, Lentor Modern, this was transacted uh, somewhere last year, if I'm not wrong, right? They're going to have 605 units. I think the prospectors are all up already, right? Um, land cost at 1204 per square feet per plot ratio, and the estimated selling price we are gauging is about $2,300 per square feet, right? Um, and if you would do just a rough quick calculation, that would give them an estimate margin for the developers of 27%, yep. And if you look at Lentor Hills Road Parcel A, which is just a short distance to the MRT station and also to Lentor Modern, right? Uh, this property, this site is going to yield about 600 units and the land cost of the developer is at 1060 per square feet and if they were to also sell, if Lentor Modern successfully sells at 2300 plus minus and they sell somewhere near that, their estimated margin is about 38%. Yep. And then of course you have these two units that is up for, uh, up for tender right now. Deadline, as I mentioned earlier, 13th of September for both plots of land, right? This land and this land, all right? And then you have Lentor Gardens here in October. And finally, I think this is the last plot. This is under the reserve, right? The reserve estimated launch date is October 2022. Uh, number of units are 475. Uh, number of units is about 475. So, you can see that it's interesting because these two parcels of land, yeah, here, Lentor Central, and here, the land tender announcement will be released before Lentor Modern's launch date, right? It's going to be released on the 13th of September, and we are looking to launch, uh, the preview starts earlier, of course, but the actual selling starts on the 16th of September. So, this could be telling of how confident the developers are of the current market. If not, they should have held their launch on the 9th of September, correct? Before the, date, uh, 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 the release of the announcement. Therefore, I think two possible things may happen. And from here, you can see that parcel A, like I said, here has been transacted at $144 per square feet cheaper than Lentor Modern. Therefore, I think during the possible launch on first quarter 2023, and depending on the situation at the time, the developers could always readjust their selling price to achieve the same profit margin, isn't it? So we can more or less guess how the price structure of Lentor Modern will be uh, once these two plots of land has been released and, and announced, right? Um, if let's say the price that has been tendered um, is the same or higher than 1204 per square feet, right? You know how they're going to do it. But of course, if it's a slightly lower price, then I guess the reverse will also happen, right? So just be a bit more, more careful. And if, and I think a big if, the land cost are all about the same in this entire plot of land, right? Um, I think Lentor will have created a new benchmark price of 2,300 per square feet for an OCR in a cluster of projects, right? So um, it's something to look, for you to look at. And I think as of right now, uh, be very cautious and picky with what you buy. Right? Uh, this is just what I analyze on what could be or what could not be um, because developers have the option to just play around with the units, right? If they wanted to clear the stock, they could always reduce their profit margin, right? I still remember two years back, most of the projects when we sold, profit margins were all, all less than 20%, yeah? And this year, with Armour itself, developers are actually selling for quite a good margin. Now, I'm just using, the, my margin is just using a land rate plus a $600 per square feet 
for the construction of costs and all the other costs. It could be higher, I'm, I'm not so sure. But if I use it as an estimate, it seems to be that the margins has been much higher for the developers. And this is where I get start to get worried because um, if this continues moving down or moving forward, cooling measures will be coming in. And when that comes in, it will mean that developers can then start to give discounts on the existing units. Right? So um, be aware of that when you look for properties to invest right, and to buy. And um, the most important, I think, is to look, plan forward at least in the next three to five years on what you think is going to happen. Right? Um, in today's newspapers, they already released another 11 stations for the Thompson East Coast Line is going to be released and ready to use by end of the year. And all this is going to add on to the, to the rental market, you can add on to the residential market in terms of its demand in, this, in that street. Right? So make sure that your cash flow is okay and in, invest smart. All right? Okay, I hope this is fruitful to you and you've learned something. Click on the like button and subscribe. Take care and God bless.